Hello, and welcome to the Arts of Language podcast with Andrew Poudois, founder of the Institute for Excellence in Writing, or as many like to say, IEW. My name is Julie Walker, and I'm honored to serve Andrew and IEW as the Director of Marketing. Our goal here is to equip teachers and teaching parents with methods and materials which will aid them in training their students to become confident and competent communicators and thinkers. So Andrew, this month is National Write a Novel in a Month month, November. Did you know that? I think someone had mentioned it to me at one time, the, the National Write a Novel in a Month month. Right, exactly. Okay, yeah. And in honor of that month, we thought it would be fun to actually talk to some published authors. And so we scoured the archives of IEW, people that write in with questions or have something to say to us. And we found a really neat family. And so we have on the show today, Marin, the mother and her two daughters who have now published a book. And that book would be Forever Writers by Gemma Swift, yeah. illustrated by Gemma and Elise Swift. Yes. Right, Bravery Creek Publishing in Bloomington, Minnesota. That's right. That's right. Minnesota, yeah. that's where I was born and raised. So kind of excited. I received but... a month or two ago, I received in the mail the announcement of the book and an invitation to go to the website and write a review. And then I opened it up and I... I got a little, dear Mr. Pudua, thank you for helping me learn how to write well, Jay Swift. Very so nice. I have, a, I have an autographed copy. It may someday be worth much. You never know. So uh, how did these girls, uh, how did Gemma get interested or how did she decide, you know, I want to write a whole book? Well, how, how did that happen? Well, we... You know, actually, we started using one of your programs. It was the theme-based writing lessons. We started using it with ancient history study, and my daughter, uh, Gemma, just, she really enjoyed the different, um, the units and the dress-ups, and um, we were doing the, the process just as it was instructed in the, the books, and then she just, she really latched on to some of those different techniques she was learning, and um, found that she really enjoyed writing through that. So I just began giving her more time and more freedom, and I can, I can share that story a little bit more in detail, um, and found that she just, she just wanted to do it more and more. She's, she's kind of a, a little bit more introverted, but through her writing, she just has been able to express her thoughts and what's on her mind and heart um, more fully, maybe than through talking. <laughs> Yeah, some some children are like that. They get some tools for writing, and it kind of opens up a a level of language creativity that you wonder why did was didn't that come out before now? I've seen that again too myself. How long did it take her from you know saying I'm going to write this thing to getting it ready to send off to the printer? I would say it was about a year long process. Uh, at the beginning of that time, we didn't know or anticipate that it would be it would become what it has become. She we just set her up with uh, what she needed to start writing on her own outside of school, and she started writing these little stories. Some of them related to real life experiences. Some of them in her imagination, and uh, you know, after a while of putting all those together and time that she had spent working on those. I, she would share share what she wrote with my husband and I, uh, and the more I saw them, the more I thought you've got a lot of content here, and it's it's just really enjoyable, and it flow seems to, it's starting to kind of flow together really well, and so we suggested that maybe she she work at at making it one continuous story because they were all just small little littler stories, uh, so she right. she worked hard at that for a number of uh, months until. You know, and then finally we, we thought, I think we have something here that we could put into a chapter book. Originally we had thought maybe it would be a picture book, 
but that would require lots of illustration. So <laughs> then I suggested a, a chapter book and everybody liked that idea. And then my other daughter wanted to get on board with helping illustrate. So everything just started coming together more and more. So yeah, about a year. Well, that is fantastic. Now, um, she obviously loves horses as so many young girls do. D is she actually, is, does she have an opportunity to ride horses? Is that part of your lifestyle there in Minnesota or is this all kind of her, her wish world? Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> she, she, all of our kids love animals. I think kids are just drawn to animals. A lot of them are in general. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's taken a special interest in horses and I've provided her with different materials and draw, you know, drawing resources to start drawing horses. And she, we went to the Minnesota State Fair and in the horse barn and she just was soaking everything in and we saw different horses and she would point out the different breeds, which I had no idea what the breeds were. And she would just, ones that I had never even heard of. So she just was it just was easily soaking in for her because it's just such an interest. And then the girls also had a trail ride uh, for their birthday party last year. It was a one hour trail ride. So that was their first experience. Um, and since then we've done one more and we plan to do some more. And then additionally, we have just started working toward volunteering at a, it's, it's basically a nursing home for horses it's when after, <laughs> after they've retired it's a little bit out out of the city um these this this farm takes care of the horses and then if you volunteer with them for 12 hours then the kids can exchange that time for a free uh riding lesson so that's something we're pursuing as well just to kind of get more experience around horses and maybe that'll inspire more riding on her part or we're just thinking of it that way as well I, I noticed the cover of the book has two blonde little girls on horses. Is that them or where'd you get this picture? That is from their trail ride that they went on for their birthday last year. Neat. Wonderful. Well, it's a, it's a attractive cover. It's a good name. And what's interesting is if you look at it, it, it looks like a book you'd pick right off the shelf in a bookstore. It's got uh an ISBN number and $6.99 price printed in, and it says uh, Bravery Creek Publishing, uh, www.braverycreek.co. Is that right? CO? That's right. And a nice little logo there. So I'm guessing that you thought, okay, I, we got daughters who want to make books. We better help that along and start a little publishing company. Uh, is that what happened? That is what happened. Yep, we just thought, well, let's let's find a way that we can kind of house this under rather than just our name. Um, so we wanted to protect her identity as a child as well. So that was kind of a, a slightly more anonymous way about, of going about it. Um, and yeah, we I appreciate you you saying that the compliments. It, we worked hard on it, and it, as we got further into the process, there was more and more and more involved in doing it, and we definitely wanted to do it right. So that just ended up taking more time. I brought on a friend who's a graphic designer and she helped us with the logo and with the cover design and all of that. So I, we're happy with it. Andrew, you may not know this, but Gemma and Elise are in the room hearing everything we say right now. So we could actually ask oh. them some questions too. Well, that, that would be fun. I, I do have one more question for the owner of Bravery Creek Publishing Company. Uh, and that is, if there were other young authors who wanted to submit manuscripts to your publishing company uh, for consideration, are you are you open that far, or is it still kind of an in-house thing for right now? How how would you feel if if people started sending you other books by younger children? Would that is that kind of a direction you want to go, or or what are you thinking there? That is an exciting idea. It's not something I've thought about a whole lot, but we definitely started it with the desire to encourage and inspire young authors and to just honor their and affirm their gifts that they have as young people um, and give them op special opportunities. So I would definitely entertain that. That's a great idea. 
great because you you've got uh a few products on the website you've got in addition to the forever writers book at 6.99 you've got handmade fabric book mart canvas liberty tote with forever writers imprint limited edition uh so it looks like you have got the start of uh possibly a really good shop going here we wanted to just add a little bit of merchandise to support the book and the two girls are hand making those bookmarks so that's a special little thing about those yeah well and as the art uh continues to develop maybe you'll have some uh prints or something at some point that would be kind of fun right definitely so uh Gemma and elise are there in the room and so we can say hello can you hear can you hear me Gemma? yes <laughs> say hi 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 i i have a question for you have you always loved the idea of writing things writing stories writing what you're thinking uh or was there a time when you kind of thought no i don't really like that and then it got easier what what's your story as a writer well i didn't really know if i liked that i liked writing stories until i actually started doing it okay that's a very good answer because some people say well i don't know if i'll like skydiving until i actually start doing it Mm -hmm. But you love animals, and you you started writing little short stories about a girl and her horse and all that, and then it uh, gradually came into a book. Did it feel like it would be a, a daunting task when the idea came up? You thought of it, or someone said, why don't you write a, a book? What was your initial thought? Like, write a book? I can't write a book. Or, hey, I could write a book. Where were you on the spectrum of confidence? Um, I didn't really know if we would be able to publish it, and I didn't know how much work it would be, but I didn't think, no, I can't write a book. <laughs> so I was kind of, did, kind of in the middle. Did it turn out to be more work or less work than you anticipated? Definitely more work. <laughs> what was the hardest thing? If you had advice for another child of approximately your age who got an idea, oh, I want to write and publish a book, what would you you know, what advice would you give them in, in terms of overcoming some of the obstacles? Just to keep going and not give up. Keep going and not give up. Very good advice. Was that was that tempting? Did you at reach a certain point? You know, I'm just too tired. I don't care. I don't really want to finish this project. Sometimes I just got tired and I wanted to stop, like, drawing the pictures for the book. That was kind of hard to keep doing. But I finally finished them and I was really excited. <laughs> Good. So um, you, you got your sister to help with the pictures then, huh? Yes. And is she there with you right now? Uh, her name is Elise? Yes. yes. Elise is here. So Elise, uh, what did you think about your sister saying, oh, I'm going to make all these stories. I'm going to make it into a whole book. What was your initial thought there? I was really excited. You thought she could do it? Yes. And then uh, when did you get in the process? Uh, at what point did you come on board as as someone to help with the illustrations and the pictures um i just wanted to help um with the process of writing the book i mean drawing the book or whatever <laughs> yeah producing the book have you always liked to draw pictures um well yeah i like to draw horses uh-huh it's not easy to draw horses or people is it <laughs> is no it? I, I bet i bet your illustration for chapter 12 which was a telephone handle. I bet that was a little easier than your illustration on page 15, which is the barn and the tree and a fence and someone watching and then uh, the girl on the horse uh, jumping over the, uh, what do you call it, a, a obstacle or whatever. That's a pretty complex drawing you've got going there. I actually did that one. That's Gemma. Saying. Oh, Gemma, you did that one. Okay. So we don't know who did which. That's kind of the mystery, huh? Right. Who, who did the one at the beginning of chapter 16 where it says, finally morning with the girl who's kind of happy but has really frazzled out hair? Oh, yeah. That was me um, because that is my hair. <laughs> because in the morning when I do not leave it in pigtails or whatever my hairdo is the, um, the day before, 
then it gets really frizzy and stuff, so I have to put a lot of water in it to uh, and brush it a bunch to get the frizz out. Okay, hold on a minute. You said that was me, and we can't see who's talking. So is that was that you, Gemma, or was that you, Elise? Elise. Elise drew that one. So you have frizzy hair in the morning. <laughs> oh, I c I can tell the difference in their voices. So. So you use yourself in the mirror there kind of as a model for that one. That's that's neat. Uh, well, um, do you do you want to add any advice, uh, you know, for someone who's been involved in putting a book together? Your your sister, Gemma, said, uh, you know, keep going, just persevere. Don't give up. Even if you get tired, just keep going. Uh, do you have anything to add to that? Um, not really. That's good advice, huh? Girls, did your mom and dad help you with this? Did they help you by encouraging you, give you some ideas of what to do next? Or did you just kind of get together and have a let's write this chapter together conversation amongst yourself? How much did your parents help you out? Well, I wrote it by myself and I just sat on the computer and I kept having cool ideas for the next part, for the next part. <laughs> And me, Elise, helped with uh, the names of the chapters. Okay, good. Um, it was funny. I was uh, reading chapter 22, A Busy Doctor. And uh, it said, Dear Dr. Humphrey, my horse is limping for some reason. And you spelled some, S-U-M. And at, at first I thought, oh, that's a horrible spelling mistake. Because, you know, it's a typo or it's a homonym and someone should have caught that and then I realized you, you did that on purpose didn't you yes to to try and show that Betsy was a young girl who maybe didn't know how to spell all that well yet in in her life yeah very very well done that was clever and uh, you also had uh, a few people uh, J Rose Ella Nora Kat and Sheila you mentioned them in the acknowledgments uh, who who are they are they friends, relatives? Most of them are friends, and Sheila is one of our relatives who owns a publishing company. Oh, oh, so Sheila is a relative who owns a publishing company, and now she has your family as a relative who owns a publishing company. <laughs> yeah, they they publish books locally here in the Twin Cities, and we, we submitted our uh, manuscript to them just to have them look at it, and, and we asked for a what she called an endorsement, which I didn't know that's what it was called, on the back of the book. And she gave the most wonderful, uh, encouraging endorsement. And then they also invited us to their office to just give us some pointers and tips on how to move forward with our process. Oh, neat. Yeah, I see that on the back. The, the last chapter of Forever Writers left me wanting more. This book has so much to offer young and old readers alike. The bond shared by Jesse, Ellie, and Betsy is heartwarming. Uh, Sheila Waldman, Tristan Publishing there. Wow. Uh, so it looks like, Gemma, if your readers are demanding more, you may have to undertake another project. Is that something you're thinking about now or something you want to not think about quite too soon? I do want to write another book, but I want to wait until we're done um, with the release party and everything slows down more so that... Um, I'll have more time to keep writing. Good, good. Well, that makes sense. You know, do things uh, when you have time. Uh, so your book is available uh, in the shop on your website, braverycreek.co, uh, along with the bookmark and the tote. Um, and I assume, uh, can it also be purchased on Amazon? Is that an option for people? Um, yes. Okay. Because people like that uh, convenience of Amazon, but I suppose it helps you a little more if, if they order it directly from you, right? Yes. If someone orders it directly from you, it gives them an option of getting a signed copy by the author. Yes. Oh, that's very nice. Sounds like you've got some, a good marketing advisor there as well. <laughs> that's a great idea. <laughs> oh, I don't know, but we, don't, we didn't hire anyone to help us with this. It's all just been trial and error and moving forward as, we, as we're learning things. So, Marin, your girls are young, and I understand that you are also homeschooling a couple boys as well. 
I know this probably keeps you all busy. How are you cultivating this love of learning, love of writing in your girls and also your boys that are up and coming? Really the love of writing for my daughter is, it was just organically grown in her. I think it's just a, a passion and a, a gift and a skill that she has. And our, you know, by writing, by publishing her book, that was just a way of affirming that gift in her and that work that she's been doing. So that was actually one of the ways of just encouraging them to see something come to fruition like this is really satisfying and I, I hope inspiring for her and for my other children as well. One of my sons loves all things engineering. Since he's been very little, he's wanted to, as a toddler, he liked moving large pieces of furniture around, just experimenting with things, and he loves ropes and hooks and pulleys and everything. So we just try different ways to also encourage those types of things in him. I've, I kind of consider that as his mom and his teacher, my job to to curate different opportunities and experiences for him to further pursue um, just developing those and, and drawing out those gifts in him. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you've got a, a great team effort there in the family, and um, it I expect we'll be hearing more from you and uh, your publishing efforts and Gemma and Elise's writing and drawing, and who knows, maybe the boys will put together a book on uh, building forts or something at some point. Our next title, yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time to visit with us uh, on this. And Gemma, I will let everyone know that this is available. And if you get your next set of stories or book going, be sure and keep me posted so I can be one of your uh, cheerleaders. Great. And to our listeners who are listening to this podcast, you know, I just I just heard a little voice in the background and I just want to be sure that the girls have an opportunity to greet our listeners and invite them to buy their book. So we do have links on our show notes where you can link to IEW.com slash podcast and we'll have a link there right to where you can purchase the book or you can just go to the website that Andrew's mentioned a couple times, braverycreek.co and you'll find the book there. So Gemma and Elise, do you want to give one final encouragement to our listeners about one thing you're looking forward to? And Gemma and Elise, I'd love for you both to answer this question. What's the one thing that you're looking forward to in the next month or two once all of the book launch and everything is done? I think starting on my next book. <laughs> yeah, what about you? And... um I think starting on the next book, too. Uh, helping Gemma illustrate the new book. Right, the book that's going to maybe come out. <laughs> Good. So you guys are still friends then. You still like each other, even though you're working hard together on a project. That's very good. Definitely, yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us here today. And girls, continue the good work. And we look forward to hearing about your next work. Yeah, thank you, Julie and Andrew, for having us on. It means a lot to us. Oh, thanks for your time and good fortune in all you do. Thanks, you as well. Thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, you can subscribe to this podcast in iTunes or Stitcher, or just visit us each week at IEW.com slash podcast. Until then, on behalf of Andrew Poudois and the team at IEW, I thank you for the privilege of allowing us to partner with you on this educational journey toward better listening, speaking, reading, writing, and thinking.